Hello, uh, Howard Owens, publisher of The Batavian. Uh, thanks for tuning in for another uh, live stream interview. Uh, pretty much our only w one going today, although we will have a live stream later of the uh, county's COVID-19 uh, weekly briefing. So uh, what we're doing today is uh, we're bringing in Jason Barrett, who is the founder and president of Black Button, uh, which is based in Rochester. It's a distillery. And one of the reasons we're talking to him is they've started uh, making hand sanitizer uh, to help us out during this crisis. And they helped Genesee County specifically by donating a batch to uh, the sheriff's office. So, uh, so Jason, thanks for joining us and thanks for helping out our community. Thanks, thanks for having, having me. me. So first of all, before we get into the hand sanitizer stuff, for those that don't uh, know your business, maybe tell us... Uh, you know, the kind of distillery you are, what you make, and also uh, we we're chatting before we got started talking here about some of the other connections you have to Genesee County. You're kind of, you're embedded in our community, uh, even if you're not based here. Yeah. So Black Button Distilling has been around since 2012. Uh, we're up at the Rochester Public Market, uh, right there on Railroad Street, where under normal uh, conditions, we would be making about 4,000 bottles a week of bourbon, vodka, citrus forward gin. You can find our products all over the Genesee County. Eli Fish uses a number of our barrels to uh, age their beer in. Uh, we sell at the Wine Goddess right there on Main Street, as well as other local liquor stores. Uh, so yeah, we, we normally make vodka, whiskey, and gin. Um, but then also we make bourbon cream, where the cream for that actually comes from a walk of milk right there in Batavia. That's great. I think it's neat that you're also getting products from us as well as uh, distributing to us. And, and I want to give a shout out to Chris Crocker. Thank her for uh, hooking us up and telling me about what you did. So tell us, first of all, about the conversion to uh, making hand sanitizer. Uh, you know, I'm a little confused about exactly what that involves and why. I've heard other distilleries doing this too. So why is it a good match? Why is this something that you could convert to? And has that does that interfere with the rest of your production at all? Are you still making making liquor? So we are not making liquor at the moment. Luckily, we're still shipping liquor because we have about eight weeks worth of each of our products in the warehouse. Uh, so there shouldn't be any shortfalls that consumers see at their local stores. But uh, uh, we are not making any liquor at the moment. So the ethanol-based hand sanitizer recipe that the FDA put out emergency guidance on three weeks ago is basically uh, double, you know, two bottles of vodka shoved into one mixed with hydrogen peroxide and glycerol, glycerol being a food additive that typically adds like thickness to uh, pasta sauce or um, salad dressing. So we, when we read that, uh, that request, we got in touch with some of the local uh, hospitals and first responders up here, found out there was a desperate need and we were able to make 5,000 bottles in our first week. Here we are now, three weeks later, we've made over 75,000 bottles, and we're gearing up in the next few days to make, uh, be making 10,000 bottles a day. Right now, we have probably a four or five month backlog as we continue to get more and more orders from hospitals and first responders and essential businesses across New York and across New England. So uh, I didn't think about this until we got on the line. You wouldn't happen to have a bottle, uh, a sample you could show us, would you, on your desk? I don't happen to have one on my desk, uh, but if folks go to blackbuttondistilling.com uh, or find us on Facebook, they'll have no trouble seeing it. I myself have actually not been to our plant in over a week. Um, my business partner, Jeff Fairbrother, is tatting up the actual production on site, and we have placed the plant into uh, restricted visitation in an effort to keep the crews there as healthy as possible because we have we don't want to have more people going in and out of the plant than necessary so i can tell you that this is actually the longest i have gone in seven years without stepping foot in that building uh, and doing it all remotely uh from my dining room has been quite an interesting endeavor these last few weeks well i gotta imagine you love what you do and so that's probably uh, uh your own kind of hardship to not go and be part of what you love uh, are you, is this um, something you're doing uh, strictly on a donation basis or are you also selling it or how's that working out? So at the scale that we're doing, 10,000 bottles a day, you know, donations would not unfortunately be economically viable for us. 
we are a small company and we only have about 20 employees, um, but we're doing it at cost. So we've been able to basically add up our costs and that's what we're asking, um, you know, the first responders to pay because uh, we're doing this to better our community and take care of people. You know, we're not trying to uh, trying to turn a profit in that, but there are real costs that go into making this. We have set up a GoFundMe page uh, and I can send you that link where if folks do want to donate, uh, we're using that money to donate bottles to, um, to organizations that don't have the budget, homeless shelters, walk-in clinics, you know, places like that that have a need but don't have the budget to be buying it. That's great. Uh, please send me the link, and I'll add that to the uh, to the description on this after uh, after once I get that after we get off. Is there anything else about what you're doing that you want to share? Um, I mean, mostly just that we're hoping it inspires others to see what they can do for their community. You know, whether it's calling that elderly neighbor just to chat because they're probably lonely as they're cooped up or offering to buy their groceries so that they don't have to go out. You know, we're really just hoping that it inspires folks to look not just at how can they take care of them and their family, but take care of their wider community. Because together, you know, we know that people in Western New York can do great things. Uh, and so we're hoping it inspires more people to, to look for ways like that. And we know it already has. Uh, Hickey Freeman started manufacturing uh, face masks from uh, from their uh, clothing. And just last night, uh, plastics companies started making face shields that they're getting to the hospitals to the tune of 150,000 a day. So it's been pretty awesome watching Western New York companies come together and meet this need right here in our community. That. Yeah, that's great. And it's a positive note to kind of end on. I do want to mention that uh, we posted a story yesterday about a Leroy company that uh, has is going now into production with making one part for a ventilator. Uh, they completely, you know, pivoted to that on short notice. So I think we need more of that. I'm hoping, you know, more Western New York companies step forward. We heard the governor today talking about the need for uh, PPE and that there ought to be enough uh, – enough resources in this state to create, to build, to uh, manufacture the PPE that uh, that's needed out there. So Jason, thank you very much. Appreciate what you're doing and, uh, you know, keep us informed on, on how things are going and uh, we'll keep looking for Black Button at Eli Fish and Chris Crocker's and wherever else it is available. So thank you. Thank you for the time. All right. So this is Howard Owens, publisher of The Batavian. We're talking to Jason Barrett, founder and uh, president of Black Button in Rochester and about the hand sanitizer they're creating and what its uh, availability of first responders and others. So uh, tune in at 4 o'clock for the county uh, COVID uh, briefing. Until then, I'll talk to you later.